Another beautiful day, another beautiful video about bleeding and coagulation disorders. In the previous video, we have talked about plasminogen activator inhibitor. Today, we continue discussing fibrolysis by talking about the alpha-2 antiplasmin. If it ends in IN, it's a protein. And if it's anti-protein, it's probably going to be protein because the active form of any substance in your body is going to be protein protein it's probably going to be produced by the liver with that being said now let's get started this is what you miss when you don't subscribe to a nice channel like mine Please subscribe and save this playlist. It's called Bleeding and Coagulation. This is just like a small sample of all my great videos. Just kidding. I'm a very humble person. Because power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely, please don't leave this plasmid free. Otherwise, it will degrade every single blood clot leading to bleeding. We need checks and balances. Let's put this plasmin in an inactivated precursor form called plasminogen. For this plasminogen to be converted into plasmin, we need TPA, which comes from the injured endothelium, the injured, not the normal, because we need an evidence of injury in order to make a crucial decision like this one, because plasmin is crazy. And this takes a few days, which is good, because we need the clot to do its job and stop the freaking bleeding. So here's the story, prothrombin, thrombin, fibrin, and fibrin. Plasmin degrades fibrin to fibrin degradation products, the stabilized fibrin into D-dimer, and the fibrinogen into fibrinogen degradation products. What does plasmin do? It digests fibrin into fibrin degradation products. It digests fibrinogen into fibrinogen degradation products. It digests 5 and 8, and it digests prothrombin and 12. All of this can be summarized in one word. Plasmin leads to hypocoagulability. Repetition is the mother of pedagogy, intrinsic and extrinsic coagulation pathways, prothrombinase complex to convert prothrombin and thrombin to convert fibrinogen into fibrin. Then we need plasmin to degrade the fibrin, but plasmin is present in a form of plasminogen, which is inactive. We need TPA or urokinase to activate plasminogen into plasmin. Now plasmin degrades fibrin into fibrin degradation products, the stabilized fibrin into D-dimer, the fibrinogen into fibrinogen degradation products, it will digest 5 and 8, prothrombin and 12. The fibrin degradation products will inhibit thrombin because if you have enough fibrinogen degradation products, why the flip produce new ones? It's crazy. It's stupid. To understand fibrin lysis properly, think of thrombin and plasmin as enemies. But we should all love each other. Okay, honey. The lawyer and the accountant both hate, hate each other, but they are both necessary for the corporation. The professor and the administrator hate their guts but they are both essential for a university to function. Okay, it's just the way it is. I have 50 hematology cases that covers topics like bleeding and coagulation disorders. They go through all of the platelet abnormalities and all of the genetic diseases about the platelets. So please go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis and get the cases. They are good for you. They will help you with your board exam. They are available only for 30 students. Then the price will increase. Three regulatory mechanisms of fibrolysis. Now, how to inhibit and regulate fibrolysis? We have three things. First, plasminogen activator inhibitor, alpha-2 antiplasmin, thrombin activatable fibrolysis inhibitor, or TAFI. We have talked about PAI in the previous video. So how do we inhibit fibrolysis? We have one, two, and three steps. Plasminogen into plasmin thanks to TPA. Who inhibits TPA or urokinase? Plasminogen activator inhibitor because plasminogen activator is a fancy name for TPA. Nice. Then plasmin. The free plasmin is inhibited by alpha-2 antiplasmin. Then the process of degrading the fibrin is inhibited by TAFI. Plasminogen into plasmin thanks to TPA. TPA is inhibited by plasminogen activator inhibitor. Then we have fibrin into fibrin degradation products and the stabilized fibrin into D-dimer. Plasmin, the free plasmin is inhibited by alpha-2 antiplasmin. The free plasmin. However, the plasmin generated on the fibrin surface, hashtag plasmin incorporated, forms a ternary complex, which means three, is protected from the alpha-2 antiplasmin. And this is awesome. The fact that the plasmin on the surface of fibrin is protected from the alpha-2 antiplasmin is amazing. 
because that's how we will get fibrolysis that we need. Otherwise, fibrolysis will never happen if alpha-2 antiplasmin had it his way. So here are the three regulatory mechanisms of fibrolysis and how they work. Quick summary, who inhibits TPN urokinase? Plasminogen activator inhibitor. Who inhibits the free plasmin? Alpha-2 antiplasmin. Who inhibits the process of degradation? Thrombin activatable fibrolysis inhibitor. Alpha-2 antiplasmin is an active guy. If you are active, you are protein. If you are protein, you probably come from the liver. Okay. It inhibits the free plasmin. That's why alpha-2 antiplasmin is antifibrolysis. Makes perfect sense. Since plasmin is a serine protease, alpha-2 antiplasmin is a serine protease inhibitor. Remember what we call serine protease inhibitors? We call them serpents. Alpha-2 antiplasmin does not inhibit the plasmin that's incorporated into fibrin fibers, as I've told you. If you have open heart surgery, what the fancy doctors call the cabbage, the coronary artery bypass graft, will lead to decrease alpha-2 antiplasmin. When you decrease the antiplasmin, the free plasmin is left uninhibited, plasmin will cause fibrolysis, and you may bleed. Also, if you have liver cirrhosis, since alpha-2 antiplasmin comes from the liver, when you have a liver problem, your liver is toast, you are not going to produce alpha-2 antiplasmin and plasmin will have his way, leading to bleeding. And that's one of the reasons we have increased bleeding tendencies in cases of liver disease. It's not the only reason, but it's one of the reasons. You guys are the best and I genuinely love you so much. So please subscribe and hit the bell to get notified. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Get my notes and all of my cases by going to patreon.com forward slash metacosis. I'll see you soon. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Metacosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.